as the collection has grown and as time has passed, now there's an increasing diversity, not only of artists, but also of the artistic medium. So photography and mixed medium, film, even dance. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish what kind of artistic expression is right in front of you. The AFA collection is a contemporary collection, and to that end, they have collected a diversity of mediums through the years, and as artists and um, art forms evolve, uh, the AFA collection has tried to keep step with those developments. My name's Carrie Wu, and I am a mixed media artist and jewelry designer. When I was a young girl, my mom used to pull her jewelry box out once in a while and share, you know, each piece. She'd pull it out and there would be a story attached to each piece. And so I think I was always enamored with the stories that are attached to jewelry. My practice is kind of a hybrid practice in the sense of mixing these other materials into my jewelry. So I'll take a non-traditional approach to jewelry making sometimes and include found objects. I like to use repurposed materials that might end up in the garbage. The two pieces that we have here in the studio today, one of them, it, it features a photograph from a pilgrimage that my family and I did to China to visit our ancestral villages. And we got to visit a gravesite of a grandfather. I'm thinking about different traditions of ancestral worship that happened in my family's culture and that my grandmother practiced and I grew up around. And then the other piece that we have here is a replica of the building my great-granddad built in 1923 in southern Alberta, and it's about balance. So it has this mini balance scales that I found at a thrift store. So the process of making these is somewhat cathartic, and then, but then it's also catalytic. When I made the first piece, you know, 20 or 25 years ago, I had no idea that I would continue working on this series of work for this long. My name is Adrian Stimson. I started off as a painter, but uh, moved into uh, performance and installation, and now sort of consider myself interdisciplinary because I kind of do it all, and I do it right from here. Anthropocene actually was a body of work. It was uh, in response to climate change. So the works are basically in response to that, and my living realities of, of being a beekeeper. I have a bee tower, which is an exaggerated beehive that goes pretty well 20 feet into the air. And in front of it is a gopher looking up the tower, and the gopher has been anthropomorphized by a little gas mask. And looking upwards, you'll see the tower, but on the very top of the tower is an owl. And in Blackfoot ways, the owl is often a harbinger of, of death. Uh, so it is a warning. While it sort of is this dire sort of installation in many ways, it also has this sort of element of humor, because if you look at the gopher and his mask, it's kind of funny. The work we create is in response to our time, and in sharing that, uh, becomes part of the record, becomes part of our history, and part of the knowledge that uh, is important to share amongst all of us. There's a gratification in that. As an artist, my voice is being listened to and shared. My name is Matt Gould, and I've had kind of, I think, a transformative practice that started back in the 70s, painting, drawing, a lot of work with 2D and flat surfaces. But then suddenly I started to move into textiles and really love the fact that as a, as a descriptive kind of a medium, you get the lovely texture, you're getting language, and you're getting this long, long history of it. So it's really opened up the range of ways I can approach my work, including working with leather. And recently in the last year or so, I've started to work with puppets. So we created some puppets that were then the ministers of different departments and created some little films about them. So that also became a way to create narrative, but also to be an activist, right? To say something. I can play with a variety of media and express myself. I don't have to be this thing that only does this. Now I can do that and I can do that. And I think the world is opening up too. You know, we're having these dialogues around, I just want to be who I am. My name is Carrie Arthurs and I'm a full-time tattoo artist. My art practice is, um, I think, 
it centers around a lot of uh, antique um, materials, and then I try and repurpose those. I like to draw people and furniture and a lot of religious iconography, flowers, stuff like that. The three pieces that were acquired were in a series called Revenant Portraits, and it's um, mixed media on antique portraits. So those portraits are undeveloped photographs from the 1800s that were finished by unnamed artists then. So they were finished with charcoal and stuff, and then they're still palliable. The use of antique materials has a story in itself, um, whether it's from stuff that families have saved or people have saved. Art for me allows me to express, it's a way to problem solve for me too. Problem solve with just myself in relation to the world or personal relationships, my family relationships. I can't use words, so here's some visuals. Tattooing is very commission based and I'm working with people, whereas opposed to my art practice, I'm working by myself and I'm doing exactly what I want to do. So I think even though they're very different, there's still some crossovers. Like I definitely tattoo like I draw. My tattoo work looks like my artwork and I've had people ask for my artwork to be tattooed. So that's nice too. We get confused with what is art and what isn't art. And people are so used to seeing paintings on the walls as art when it can be a number of things. It could be a really avant-garde sculpture or it could be a piece of furniture. Last year we created a pluralism policy. Um, and the goal is that that will infuse all our work. So that means increased accessibility and involvement of artists from every walk of life and every kind of background, which is part of our identity and important, therefore, for the collection. So the AFA, for me, really represents support for artists, certainly for Albertan artists. When you're out there maybe pushing the boundaries or putting yourself out there because it's really vulnerable, to have this organization and this institution that says, well, we support you, we love what you're doing to the extent that we want to have some of it in this collection. So then it becomes this bigger record, if you will, for the people of Alberta, for the whole province. As a fine craft artist who works mostly in functional work and then has this, what I consider kind of a strange to hybrid practice between the visual, like the fine arts and the fine craft kind of sector, I never, have a sense of where I fit in. And so to be acquired by a provincial collection uh, was, felt affirming to my practice. When I first got into the arts, Indigenous representation was still pretty low and there was still a lot of issues of racism and such within the community. What I have seen or witnessed in the last number of years is a shift. Uh, in that, uh, shift in the idea of valuing, valuing voices. And so I think uh, First Nations artists are being uh, brought in uh, a lot more. Even the privilege of having gone to art school when, you know, women weren't actually welcome in art institutions. So to be represented as a female artist, as a woman of colour artist, and also working kind of more in an underdog field inside the visual arts and fine arts kind of sector, uh, it feels great to have that recognition and I'm really happy to be representing you know my kind of corner of the of the arts sector in the collection. So it's really important I think for the AFA's collection to continue to diversify and grow and reach out even to more areas. It's important for arts to take the lead and to say okay you may not get this right now, but you're going to get it down the road, et cetera, et cetera, right? So they can be leaders. We can also see the transition between, um, you know, past and present and what materials were used then and what materials are used now and, and how it all relates. Pluralism is about fostering that public dialogue amongst disparate groups and building social cohesion and understanding. And, you know, that's what the arts do, and that's clearly um, what some of the pieces in the collection can do. And I think as Alberta opens up and becomes much more cool, I think about being multicultural, right? Because we aren't this thing that we were when I was growing up. We're this whole other thing that's pretty interesting, and that's starting to be reflected in the collection. So then we can go and we can see all kinds of makers doing all kinds of stuff.